everyone. This is Talking with Haitian Jonas, a new segment in On Camera. And we are here to talk to you about the politics in Haiti, the culture, the water, the electricity system. And we will have with Mark Bello what mean talking to you about Haiti. Feel free to call all your friends to let them know that Haitian Jonas is on. And we would like to have you guys to stay tuned. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. You're watching on camera. Good evening, everyone. You are watching on camera. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. You are watching on camera. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. You are watching on camera. Good evening, everyone. I'm Saisha. And I'm Alvin. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. In today's edition of On Camera. Together, we work to inform and entertain you. On camera, we'll take you there. Welcome back to talking with Haitian Jonas with my billow we have with us today and uh, how you doing again well thank you again Jonas uh, for sitting next to you <laughs> in uh, this new segment called uh, talking with Haitian Jonas and I'm sure I'm not the only person that will be sitting next to you you will be having a few more guesses in, a lot in, of uh, guesses yes yes in um, talking with Haitian Jonas and uh, thanks again for having me, and, and I would like to say thank you to all the viewers who are watching on camera and with this new segment called Talking Talk to Asian Shows. <laughs> uh, one thing, um, just want to let people know that feel free, um, if you're on Facebook and you, will, you want to talk to us, feel free to contact me. You know where my Facebook is, and you can send me an inbox or you can go to my comments and say hey i would like to be part of your show you don't have to be for or against so feel free to come and talk about your country if you live in america feel free people has the right to say anything they want as long as it's concise or it's proper well um, yeah as long as we not uh, really deliberately offending anyone, anyone. or disrespecting anyone uh, you know, it's freedom of expression. That's the right for the press. You know, the pre exactly. Yeah. Um, with my, I have a few questions. Um, we went to Haiti together. You know how it was. Um, let's start about the electricity. Well, um, if you remember, in one of uh, Michel Martelly's uh, debate, for instance, uh, whether in New York or in Boston, uh, he also had mentioned about. Uh, you know the problem of the electricity in Haiti, and uh, this is this should not be anything new to any of us. Uh, well, we know there's a big difference now uh, than uh, when Duvalier regime yeah. was in power. Uh, whether you like or don't like Duvalier, at mm -hmm. least you can say that when they were in power, father and son, that we had access to electricity more than we do have electricity in, uh, in Haiti. And it's, it's, it's a sad situation because uh, electricity plays an important role in the lifestyle now that we're living and in society. And uh, so you need electricity really to function mm -hmm. properly. And a lot of people don't know, um, I like to compare um, Haiti with Jamaica we have the same land and how the Jamaican they use um, uh, the Chinese people they try to use the bauxite. Bauxite mm -hmm. is a, it's a system like they use the dirt. Certain dirt will turn to electricity for you in Jamaica. I, I was surprised and then I saw those land and I saw this, um, the sand. It was the same thing in the mountains, same thing that we have and then people were, you know, people were taking you know, taking advantage. Mm -hmm. There was one thing you hate about when you were in Haiti. Um, you hate the people doing. Every time we drive by a mountain, you see people digging dirt to put in oh, their truck. Well, you're right, Jonas. Uh, sorry to cut you off. Yes. Because, I mean, right across from where we live when we're in Haiti, uh, the mountain is right. We're looking at the mountain, and then you could see how they uh, scrape the mountain, make it 
bold to the point where you don't see the green part anymore all you see is is the white portion of the mountain you know it's like when you uh, got a cut deep and then you see the tissue mm -hmm. you know before the blood yeah you know actually you know it's comes the out mm -hmm. yeah the flesh so and and then basically it's it's um I, I don't like it. I, I just don't like. I, I I said to myself, you know, those people need to understand the damage that they are, you know, doing to to the country. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, those mountains they're there for a reason, and they so uh, they normally protecting Haiti from hurricane and all that. So they're not there just for yeah, you know, no reason. How do you feel when um, there was a part that we want to? Oh. Uh, you, well, since we were talking about electricity, mm -hmm. uh, I think we need to elaborate a little bit more on that. Not only we mention about the, the importance of it, but also um, even when you're looking at it uh, in a crime factor, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, by having electricity, by having light on the streets at night, that in itself That's can fair. prevent, exactly, uh, uh, you know, crime, kidnapping, you know, kidnapping. And what we have observed when we were in Haiti, <laughs> uh, after we do our, you know, journalists, uh, uh, you know, um, running around during yeah. the daytime and everything, and then we actually going back home uh, late at night, and then we realized that it was the uh, the light from the vehicles at night that is that are leading the street. You know that, that they light the street up, so yeah. it's not really light coming from the electric. Uh, electric pole. Yeah, it's the solar. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. that's that's a problem. One one of the problems that I saw in um, the whole electricity thing, you mentioned it. There, I don't know if the government is part of it because they they tried to find a solution to slow the crime, the kidnapping. Daytime, people don't really need electricity because they go to work or something. And sometimes they need for the school and everything because the school, if they are independent, they can have their own inverter or um, generator too. But at nighttime, most of the kidnapping happened during that time. Yeah, but I still, I beg to, I beg to differ in, in respect to that, you know, you don't really need the electricity during the daytime because people go to work. No, uh, I disagree with that for the simple fact that uh, you need the electricity for the refrigerator to conserve, to conserve you know, the, mm -hmm. the food, the meat, and also businesses that runs on electricity mm -hmm. that they need it in order to be operational. So you need electricity. Uh, I mean, come on, we came back from 200 years mm -hmm. ago so we are now in 2010, and then you're gonna be telling me that electricity is an issue for you in a yeah. country where that uh, they uh, give Haiti money on a yearly basis, the International Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Haiti is, is like a beggar when it comes to asking for money on a yearly basis. So mm -hmm. what, are, what have they done with, with those money that they gave them? You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. The the uh, uh, there is no excuse. Okay, we are uh, at a century now where that everywhere in Haiti should be uh, lit with electricity, mm -hmm. whether it's daytime or whether it's nighttime. Do you remember? I mean, do you remember we were surprised that we went to a place? And it was Mirabale and Las Cabas. We saw electricity 24-7. Well, thank you for mentioning that. That's another thing, too. Because, you know, I'm so fed up with that part of Prince, part of Prince yeah. thing. And then when I, you know, it's like, you know, every Haitian you, you meet, for instance, uh, where you're from, oh, I'm from part of Prince, as if part of Prince was the it. Mm -hmm. However, now one should be ashamed of telling people that you're from part of Prince. Because mm -hmm. to me, and I'm saying it right on TV. Port-au-Prince to me is like a big dumpster. Port-au-Prince is like a, a garbage disposal where you just come in and dump and dump, and dump garbage. Mm -hmm. So whether you are the elite, whether you are from you know the government, and or whether you are the the mass populace, to me everybody is almost like in a like in a pig house. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
and I'm saying it over and over again, uh, living in a nice house, having a beautiful car, to me, that is uh, irrelevant because that doesn't exempt you from living in Port-au-Prince, mm -hmm. in the dumpster, because you're going to have to get out of that car at a point in time. Yeah. You're going to have to get out of your house at a point in time. you got to commute to some offices you know, to take care of business. And then especially those people who have business in downtown, supposedly, in, hmm. in the main street, whatever. I mean, how can you just sit there in that filth for about 12 hours, yeah. you know, running your business and this is where you eat? You so basically, where you do number two and then you eat at the same Day place and stuff? I mean, come on, man. I, I think it's, it's, it's a lack of vision, it's a personality and character's problem. Do you remember one part where it happened to be in Petroville? We were filming and there was a group of people. We make sure that you can show it to them. There was a group of people when we were showing the dirt, the trash, where they working, where they selling. There were, there were a bunch of trash there. And they some of them said, don't film, don't film. Yeah, well, and the other one came up, the other guy came up. He said, oh, he has to. Because oh yeah, that was yeah. I remember that. Make sure we uh, yeah, show that. we were filming. Of course, mm -hmm. I mean we have ton of footage mm -hmm. uh, when we were in Haiti. Uh, basically, we didn't go only for the election. Yes. We went for the election, and we also went outside Port of France. Uh, we went to Mirbalé. We went to Las Galdas. We went to Guafé. We went to Saint Marc, and you know we interviewed people uh, by the border of Dominican Republic and Haiti and Las Carabas. I mean, we had a chance to uh, have their saying, I mean, for them to express, you know, their problems, you know, their their concern about the way things are going in Haiti. And then um, it's just come Black to a point where that, is when is it gonna end? When uh, do so Haitian, uh, when are Haitian going to actually be conscious of the problem, the continuum of, you know, of problem that is taking place in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And then what are they deciding to do about it? I mean, uh, it, you were gonna say something. Yeah, the uh, member, uh, um, that was really touched when we were at the border. Um, there was one woman, she was very educated and um, she talked about the reason why we're at the gate because we don't have a mashi, a little market to have our business. Mm -hmm. It was really sad. Okay, um, there was a point that but you I'll asked back, her. I'll come back to the garbage again yeah. because the garbage part interests me so much. Mm -hmm. I need to speak to yeah, that would definitely. a little bit more, but you can continue about we'll come, that woman. There's another thing I'm going to yeah. put in the garbage. And the woman was, all she was asking for the government to put is a uh, market flea market so that that way they can sell it because back in the days Dominican people Dominican Republic people they used to come to that mache mm -hmm. to sell their uh, to buy their um, product from the Haitian yes now they closed the gate to the Haitian and then they said you know what we won't let you in now to come and go to my market and buy stuff yeah it was really sad uh what happened is like it's it's pretty uh it's it's pretty obvious okay why we you know the haitian people at the border they were having they they were uh, having this kind of problem or they're forced to be in that mm -hmm. situation uh simply haiti only imports everything haiti doesn't export anything mm -hmm. and if you're not producing well, what do you expect you have to go buy things elsewhere, you know, because you're not producing anything anymore. Haiti is getting everything from Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. I mean, being the neighbor, they're right there. It's faster. It will probably t it'll, it'll take less time than than Miami. Easy. And I don't know if you noticed that when we were at the border, uh, the gate was closed, and the reason why it seems like it was due time for them to open the gate, but they didn't. And I think just because they they saw our camera, so I, I'm sure that it was probably some illegal transaction at the border. You know, people are trying to, uh, uh, you know, buy goods. You know, from from the gate. From the gates, um, they do they do a lot of legal stuff down there. That's why when they said when we were about to go in, and they said 
we have to wait for a little while. Yeah. And they know we couldn't wait for that long. <laughs> we had to turn around and there were a lot of trucks there and they stopped the trucks and from going in. And it's kind of like, an, it's very insulted how they treat the Haitian there. Well, we have this lady that we interviewed and uh, she did express uh, her sentiment, uh, you know, in terms of the way that they thought that the Dominican people would treat them at the border. 